Uh, how did you become involved in teacher education? Well, it was it was. Can I just yeah, stay yeah, with yeah, stay yeah, with yeah, sure, um, yeah. St Davies High School for a minute? Yeah. One of the things I did at, as head of um, Royal School of Science was to go to the feeder primaries, and the junior schools weren't interested. But there was a fantastic uh, school called um, Broughton Infant School. I copied them to Broughton In Infant School, and the head teacher there was an absolute visionary. She wasn't doing a lot of science, but she said, "Come and show us how to do it, Judith," and I did. Um, I stayed at Bromwich Second until I had my son, mm. and when I had him, I, I decided I'd stay at home. I became a childminder, mm. um, and I childminded somebody for somebody whose child was it, seven days older mm. than my son, so that was, that was really well, well, nice. Well, yeah. After two years, though, I saw an advert in the paper for a science teacher in mm. one of the remaining middle schools in Chester. And so I applied for the job. Um, I didn't really get on very well there because that was one of those places where they wanted me to fit the mould rather than develop my own style of teaching. Yes. So I had just stayed for the two terms. And after that, I did quite a lot of supply teaching. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, one day, I got a phone call from head of science at Upton. Upton, Upton Comprehensive School, which was the best secondary school in Chester at the time. Mm. And um, this guy said to me, we don't really want you to teach. We've got a student coming in. And what we want you to do is to move around with the student and be the qualified teacher in the classroom. I think they got somebody off sick. Mm -hmm. And this student was taking over the time table. Yeah. So I went into Upton High School and I sat at the back and I thought, oh, this is very boring. And you can imagine I'm not going to sit still and do nothing. Yeah. So I started to write little notes. Mm. And um, after a while, partway through the practice, who should come in to see the student but Tim Healy, my science tutor from Chester College. Oh, right, yeah. And um, yeah, he was amazed, as you mm. And later that year, he rang me and said, Judith, there's a little 90-hour job um, teaching primary science to mm. the, they were then, undergraduates. Mm. Um, would you like to come and, and do this job for us? So I got a 90-hour contract, mm. which was m mainly after school. Yes. So for a while, I did um, this job at Chester College, teaching mm. primary science. And I did science teaching wherever I could get it, but usually mm. secondary schools. And from there, from the 80 hours, they then started offering me mm. supervision of students in on school practice. And eventually I became a, a part-time mm. uh, lecturer. And <coughs> then I got my degree, which I haven't told you about, a part-time. Right, and doing that as well. Goodness, so that's a busy time. It was a busy time. I got, I got my part-time in-service degree in guidance and counselling, which was quite significant, and mm. curriculum studies, which was science, um, in 1984. Mm. And then, was that at Chester or...? or no, it was at Catreveley, uh, which was part of the North East Wales University. Oh, yeah, the consortium. Yeah, uh, yeah, so it was, it was part of Bangor, I suppose. Yeah. And I got my, my first class honours degree from the University of Wales. Mm. Um, I didn't even go to the graduation ceremony. Right. Interesting. Very sad that, looking back on it. But, but was it was that because you did, did uh, feel that, that you were part of the university? Yeah, I think it probably was, yeah. With, the, the, with yeah. The being a, working at a distance and being part time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I used to do weekends, which was quite interesting. Yeah. So you're involved in teacher education now. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, you, uh, how is it, do you think teacher education has changed during the years you've been involved in? I think that's a really interesting question because my teacher training was very different from uh, the teacher training that happens now yes. and obviously very different to that of my colleagues, many of my colleagues. Mm. And um, I think at Chester College when I started there as a lecturer, 
I'd already got this reputation of being a model student, you know, um, mm. hardworking, innovative, mm. uh, in the know about primary and secondary education because I was still doing it. Mm. And I think they uh, really, well, they listened to what I had to say and let me do my own thing, really. And Tim Healy and I worked on, do you remember when Baby Days came in? Yes. We had to go off to... to um, a very reluctant group of teachers in Bolton, I remember, um, do, doing Twilight. Yeah. Uh, but he and I worked together and we developed our own sort of model. Mm. So I, I felt really empowered at, at Chester College as a, mm. as a tutor there. Mm. And so even the training at Chester College that the students were getting when I left was actually very different mm. to what I encountered when, when I was here, when I came mm. here. And that's been documented elsewhere, as you probably know, with, mm. with Karen Vincent and the, um, that project yeah. that I'm involved with. How do you think teacher education could be improved? Well, I think um, there's too much... In the university, there's too many bits, particularly mm. for the undergraduates, and the PCCs, I think. Mm. And I think um, there are principles of practice that can be applied across subjects yes. and I think for too many of the students they get the same diet of things shoved at them in different curriculum areas. Right, so there's some generic ideas and approaches that fit across all, all subjects and it can be more efficient if the students uh, join together to, to receive them or there's some module common modules made available i i get that impression mm. um recently i've been doing focus group evaluation of, mm. of the science yes. and um we don't quite seem to be getting it right you know the and i'm really s specifically talking yeah. about science mm. the programs being overhauled and my colleagues have worked really hard on mm. that but <laughs> somehow Somehow it's um, not... They love the practical work. Yes. Sometimes they say we don't always need to be doing all this practical work. Mm. And we're throwing a lot of hours into science, say, in year one of the undergraduate mm. programme. So they're perhaps doing 90 hours of science. And for me, I think, actually, couldn't we be using this, this time more productively? Mm. I think, for me, teacher education should be about quality rather than quantity and we need to be giving a lot more ownership to the students. Well I'd far rather have um, a 30 hour course where we address particular things very well rather than trying to string out a course for 90 hours mm. when maybe that's not what's needed. Yeah. I think we've got to be very careful about what the practical work's for. Mm. And it isn't just to give them a rest from, um, let's, they come to us in science and they say, oh, we love science because it gives us a break from, we don't have to sit and listen all the time, we can do practical stuff. Yes. I love giving them practical stuff. It's what I, you know, I, I believe absolutely that they should be doing practical yeah. stuff. For two reasons. They need to understand why we're doing it that way. Yes. So they need to learn the process of, of for example, getting... Um, children to raise questions, mm. which they're not always good at, particularly not investigative questions. Mm. And we also need to get them to raise questions to, to develop their own subject knowledge. But yeah. if we're just doing an activity because it's a fun activity, I hate the F word, you know, yeah. the students, oh, that was fantastic, we had great fun. Yes, but what did you learn from yeah. it? That's the point. It's just, you know, the, the goal is not to make learning fun, because learning in itself is engaging and, and, re and rewarding. Uh, fun is a different thing. Sometimes you know, the, uh, learning is, is that difficulty and challenge. The people who make uh, uh, the successful computer games that the, 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 the kids and grown-ups play, uh, you ask them about fun and they say it's about putting in challenge. Uh, you know, make, putting in difficulty, uh, and, 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 and so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of nonsense to make learning fun. Absolutely. So get edited out, is my view. 
<laughs> Please don't edit it. It's out. I need that. I need that. Don't let me have it, won't you? Because I need that argument. Okay. Because um, I'm doing some work with the Primary Science Teaching Trust, yeah. and some of my colleagues, uh, some of my colleagues, um, say we've got to make science fun, and there's more to yeah. science than it being fun, as you've just said. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so. there's that stuff that Jonathan Barnes goes on about, like, that impossible to pronounce uh, Polish name, which is talking about flow. And it's, it's basically when, you, when your attention and all your, your mental aptitude is focused in on, the, on that problem. Absolutely. And, 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 the, and, the, and the people talking about being in that state, time disappears. Yes. You know, so when, when issue of fun... Uh, well, if fun is something that may, maybe of a glass of wine with pals that you do when you're re 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 relaxing, uh, maybe the, maybe there's satisfaction and enjoyment. Yes. Maybe I'm, I'm comfortable with those in, 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 in learning, but yeah. fun trivialises the importance of learning. Absolutely. Yeah. You keep that for me, won't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the things that I think is that the um, SEND issue. Yeah. We've got loads of students on quite a number of the programmes who are really wanting to do the specialism, as they call right. it. Um, I, I believe they should be doing far more of that in their core, not, I don't mean core subject, but in their core diet of, of um, their teacher education. Right. Because I did psychology, I did child development, I right. did sociology. Sociology of education for me was fantastic right. coming yeah. from a working class background. Right. And I think we need... We need that, but we need our, our students to be able to cope with the challenges that are faced in the classroom by those children who've got those particular yeah. questions. Um. Chester College introduced me to educational research. Mm. I was there at the time when Social Relations in the Secondary School was mm. published, and um, so Hargreaves and his uh, investigations into streaming in the secondary school. And there's a guy called Lacey as well who was doing similar stuff, yeah. So um, I thought it was really interesting that such a lot of fuss was being made out of relatively small-scale studies because that's what they were. Yeah. And it was interesting that Ken Bryan opened my eyes to that. You know, he was said, have a look at this, read this, come back and we'll talk about it. But he, he, never, he never said... No, this is this is um, the right answer, or this is how it is. But he also got got me to think about how that educational research was mirrored in my experience, and obviously that social relations in secondary schools mm. mirrored quite. Right, so it, it, it supported the approaches that you were taking. Yeah, it supported me. They supported me in understanding what was happening in. Right in my own grammar school and in um, grammar sec, but also supported me in, in thinking about how we had to value everybody's um, and encourage everybody, because I'm, I've never been one to write people off, you know. When I've got my children in my class classes at St David's High School doing the individualised stuff, I didn't mind however, my, how many, however many times I explain the same thing to different children but because I got that rapport and I knew that it was I was responding to the individual yeah. in the way that the individual needed to be responded to mm. so I suppose research um, the sociology the psychology stuff that that I was told to read informed that yeah. to quite an extent mm. um, but it wasn't the sort of research that that's happening now. Um, so yes, that old stuff did influence my thinking, and and I think I, I'm always quite amused when young colleagues come and say, "Have you read that stuff by is it Stephen Ball or, mm. or have you read Pring?" Mm. You know, when I was reading Pring mm. in the, well, the first time round, first time round, yeah. <laughs> yeah. makes me feel very old. Um, but but the, it's almost as if it's it's new and revolutionary and actually it's just that thing coming round again.